The worst kind of scam is the one where you don't even know that you've been scammed. And there are tons of Amazon customers falling for a particular one every single day and they have no idea. And that's why it's time that I tell you about the Amazon Prime video scam. I wanna thank privacy.com for sponsoring this video and helping you take care of your online payments. But first I'm gonna tell you about how this scam works and then I'm gonna call up these scammers myself. But I became aware of this scam when I went to set up Prime Video on my new TV. And whether you've got a smart TV or you're setting up something like a Roku or a Fire Stick, you'll know that the first thing that happens is Amazon will generate a six digit code on the TV and tell you to visit amazon.com slash my TV to activate it. And what normally happens is you would go to Amazon's site, log into your Prime account, enter the code, and then you're good to go. But what if you typed in the URL incorrectly? What if instead you did what millions of people do every single day and just did a Google search for Amazon My TV? Or you forget the dot in the URL and you just enter amazon.com slash my TV. If you do this, you're not gonna end up at a website, but you're likely to see an ad or a couple of ads targeting these keywords. Seriously, go ahead and try this. If you Google these phrases, you're going to see something like this, depending on how many scammers are buying ads for that keyword that day. And at first glance, it looks like this is the site where you would register your device for Prime Video, but it's not. These are copycat websites designed to look like Amazon. But if you're in a hurry or you're distracted or you've never done this before, you're not gonna notice the difference and you're just gonna click on the first thing that looks right. Now, if you were to go to the real Amazon site, you'd end up here where it's asking you to log into your Amazon account. But if you go to the scam site, they just want you to put in the code, which is what you would do on the real site after you log in. And you can enter your code into these fake sites, but it really doesn't matter what you put because you're just gonna get the same message every single time with a prompt to call them up. You could put anything like A, B, C, D, E, F, or even you suck, but it's still gonna say success and then it's gonna give you a number to call. Now, all of this is designed to get you on the phone. These websites, the ads, all of it is designed to get you to call them up because once they are speaking to you on the phone, they can manipulate you into actually giving them access to your Amazon account. And you wouldn't believe how successful they are at this because for the past few weeks, I've had unprecedented access to one of these centers. I've tracked them to India where they're hosting their sites and taking calls from Americans who simply just wanna get their TV working so that they can watch the new Jack Reacher series. Now listen to one of these phone calls and see for yourself how it works. Thank you for calling in support. This is Louis, I can help you. I don't know, I'm supposed to call this code to get into my Amazon Prime. Okay. There must be a six-digit code onto the television. Could you please help me with that? B C J E Y X. So the scammer is sitting at his desk taking the call and he writes down the number and then he gets the victim to say the email address associated with the Amazon account. And your Amazon email account? Um, M12 at yahoo.com. So what he's doing now is the scammer's entering the victim's email address on Amazon's site and clicking forgot password. He's trying to reset the victim's password so he can gain access. But to do this, he needs the two-factor authentication code that Amazon will send to the owner. But how's he gonna get that? Well, he'll simply just ask. There must be a code coming up onto the text message. Let me know once you receive it. You know when you reset your password and the text that you get says something like, do not share this with anyone? That means do not share it with anyone, even people claiming to work for Amazon. I got it, it's, it's 750270. Great, now he has access to her Amazon account and he needs to set up a new password and this will just take a minute. So while he's doing that, he makes some small talk. And from how long you're using Prime Services? How long have I been using Prime Services? Yes, ma'am. Oh, I can't even remember how long. <laughs> Many years. Okay, ma'am. So now he's managed to reset the password and he's logged in. And he can easily just enter that code that she gave him and activate the TV. But before he does that, he's gonna milk every dime out of her that he can. So as I'm checking your account over here, uh, uh, the only problem, you know, which is pending onto your account is 4K resolution. Uh, the 4K resolution is pending, yes. What is he talking about 4K resolution? There's no 4K plan on Prime Video. You pay for your Prime membership and then you get access to their video content. That's it. This woman is a Prime customer and could get that TV working if she would just log in herself and enter that code. But this jerk has convinced her that she needs to pay for it. Uh, one more thing is going on. Your device limit 
your account is also being exceeded. There's not a limit to how many devices you can put Prime Video on. There's a limit to how many devices you can stream at one time, but that's not what he's talking about. And there's no upgrade plan to increase that. He's selling her a lie. So now, what do you need to do right now is you need to upgrade your account, okay, from basic services to the premium services. There is no premium services for Amazon Prime Video. This is all bull crap. So finally, she gets suspicious and she's ready to hang up and call the real Amazon. Okay, well, you know what? I'm just going to wait and contact regular Amazon and talk to them about this. So thank you very much for your time. But then he reels her back in. Ma'am, you are talking to the regular Amazon only. Mm, well, there's so much stuff about that stuff, and I'd rather just deal with Amazon as this, Amazon. This is Amazon, ma'am. Recently, you have made a sparkling ice, sparkling oh, yeah. water. Yeah, yeah, guess I'm you so are me. So that's exactly what I've done. <laughs> no, that doesn't mean that he's with Amazon. That means that you let him into your account, and now he's snooping around at what you bought. This is so painful because all this woman has to do is log in and enter the code herself. She's already paid for Prime. She just needs to register her TV. And I can tell you that these scammers get dozens of these calls every day and they run this exact same scam. And they all go down the exact same way. I'm trying to sign in to on my Prime video on my television and I just put in the code and it said I had to call. It said I had to do a manual dial in or something. The 4K registration is pending, like, you know, pending onto your account. So, and this plan, premium plan, ma'am, there is only a one-time fee for this plan, which is $199.99 only. Now give me the code again. You're trying to change my password, is that correct? No, we are setting up a default password, ma'am, in order to activate this account. The number 4 L Larry. F. So would you like me to upgrade the account with this offer? See, that is the reason you are getting this great discounts. Let me tell you. How do I go about paying? What do I need to do to pay this? So once the scammers convince their victims that they need to pay up to get their TV working, they send them an invoice. And depending on how many years they want this premium service, they'll charge them anywhere from $50 to $300. Do you see option says pay now? And let me know once your payment is done. So this money isn't going to Amazon, it's going straight into the scammer's bank account. And once the scammer has the money, they simply just enter the code that they were given and the TV is up and running. Uh, yes, here it is, introducing Prime Video Profiles. Yep, we got them. It's working now? We're good. Thank you. Okay. All of that just to activate a TV that you could have done on your own with a couple of clicks. Now, these aren't huge dollar numbers, but if a scammer can get half a dozen calls that day, that's a couple thousand dollars a week with virtually no overhead other than the Google ads that they're buying. That's a lot of money in India. And it's a lot of money to pay for someone to just push a couple of buttons for you. I tried to text a couple of these victims to let them know that they've fallen for a scam, but they always seem more suspicious of me than they were of these scammers. Why am I always the bad guy? So instead of trying to convince these people to file chargebacks with their banks, I thought that I'd just call up the scammers themselves and try to slow them down. So I'm going to pretend that I'm an actual customer trying to get my Prime video working. And I've set up a fake account under the name of Steve Jensen. Then I call up the number and I'm immediately connected to their lead guy, Lewis. We're calling in support. This is Lewis. I'm going to help you. Um, hi, hi, Lewis. Uh, I, I got a phone number that I was supposed to call you to activate my TV. Okay. May I have your first and last name, sir? My first name is Steve. Steven, Steve, my last name is Jensen. Okay, and since I already know how the scam goes, I'm ready to complete the first step, and that's to get him a code from my TV. And the code which you can see on the TV? The code is C Q 4366. Okay, just wait a moment. But now he needs to log in to my account. Could you please help me with the email account situated with Amazon Prime? Yeah, it's Steve Jensen. Eight six seven nine. That's what I use to log into Amazon. That's what you need, right? Right, sir. Uh, you must have received an OTP onto this uh, email account. Let me know once you receive it. What's that? What is that? Okay, so soon enough, I get an OTP, a one-time password in my email, along with a nice little warning about how you shouldn't share this code with anyone, including the Amazon customer service team. Funny how people always miss this part of the email. But he asked nicely, so I just go ahead and I give it to him. One, two, one, zero, five, two. 
Soon I get a second email from Amazon warning me that someone has signed into my account on a Windows desktop in New Jersey. Funny how people also miss that. But I know that these guys are in India, not New Jersey, so he must be using a VPN. Which is pretty clever. But I'm even more clever. But when he's in my new account, he notices that I'm not even signed up for Amazon Prime. And you haven't subscribed with Prime yet. Okay, maybe I'm not as clever as I thought. He can't register my TV if there's not an active Prime account. So for me to get to the next step in this scam, I actually have to go sign up for Prime Video. And apparently, Lewis can't do it for me because he's not a real Amazon employee, remember? Now, I am a Prime member on my personal Amazon account, but not on this fake account. And I don't really feel comfortable having my actual credit card tied to this fake account that I'm about to give a scammer access to, so I'm going to sign up for Prime Video using a virtual number from privacy.com, today's sponsor. They've got a great way for you to generate virtual numbers that will act as your card, and these are totally unique numbers that mask your banking information. You just need to set up a funding source for the card, but privacy will control who can charge the card, for exactly how much, and how often the card can be run. So it's not just a safe way to make purchases online, especially if you're dealing with scammers like I am. It's a great way to manage your finances. Like right now I'm signing up for this monthly Prime Video membership and I know that I only need it for a day, but to make sure I don't forget and get charged a second time, I'm setting up this card so that it's a single use card that will close immediately after it's run. Privacy will help you take control of your payments and monitor your spending more easily. I really think that you should try it out and see what you think. And Privacy will give you $5 when you sign up with my link at privacy.com slash pleasant green. It's not a trick, it's free money just to let you try it out. And I think that you're gonna love it. So go to privacy.com slash pleasant green today. So now Steve Jensen is an Amazon Prime member and he's also ready to have some fun with these scammers. Except this time when I call back, I'm connected to an Alice Grace. Thank you for calling support. This is Alice. How may I help you today? Okay, so now we're back to square one, I guess. Yes, sir. I will surely help you. You would be getting some code on the screen. Yes, there's a code. There's a code on the screen. Give me the code, sir. Okay, the code is BDS3BF. So I give her the number, and soon I get my email with a two-factor authentication code, which I give her against Amazon's own warning. Five nine seven zero six eight. And soon she's into my account because I get the second email alerting me that someone has signed into my account. But this time they're not in New Jersey. They're in... That's a rookie mistake, Alice. You forgot to turn on your VPN. Now anybody who's paying attention will know that you're operating out of India. But now she can see that I'm a Prime member and she can easily register my TV with a single click. But here comes the bullcrap sales pitch. And for that, we need to upgrade your account registration, device registration, so we can access the videos on them, on your TVs and the other devices too, okay? Okay. So Alice texts me a link to the PayPal invoice and the scammers are using the Prime logo to make it seem legit. But it's not. And by the way, if Amazon wants to charge me for something, they have my credit card on file. They don't need to send me a PayPal invoice. But they're not Amazon, remember? They're scammers. Where are you guys based out of? Pardon? Where are you guys based out of? Well, I am new in Jer New Jersey right now. Oh, you're in New Jersey? You said no, the lie detector test determined that was a lie. <laughs> so I'm not gonna send Alice a payment, but I am gonna send her something else. Remember, I've been following these guys for weeks now, and I know the very building they're working out of. And I start to think, if I was robbing people and claiming to be in New Jersey while actually operating in India in the middle of the night, I'd probably be pretty spooked if my victim just randomly texted me a picture of my building. So that's what I did. I responded to Alice's text with a picture of the exterior of her building. I just sent you a text message. Can you look at it? Hello? Hello? Alice? Yes, sir? Did you get my text message? Yes, I did got your text message. Did you see what it was? Yes, you sent some of the photographs. What do you mean by that? Isn't that where you're working? No. But you're in India, right? Absolutely not, sir. Mm, no, actually, I think that you are. No problem, that's your fine. If you need any help, you can call us back. You have a very great day. Whoa, where'd you go, Alice? You didn't even fix my TV.
Also, why did you tell me to call back with questions if you're just gonna disconnect the number? So I tried calling the other number I had. Thank you for calling in support. This is Louis, I'm gonna help you. Hi, can I talk to your boss? Okay, may I take a message? Uh, is he available? No, sir. I just wanted to know if he wanted to respond, if he had a comment or how he wanted to respond to uh, people saying that he's scamming people. Does he, does he feel good knowing that he scams people for a living? No, sir. Do you feel good knowing that you scam people for a living? Are you in Jal Jalandahar? No. You're, you're not really with Amazon, are you? Can I get a message for you? Uh, I, 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 my, my message is just, I think that you should maybe find a different way to make money rather than scamming people. Well, we haven't taken any money from anybody. Well, you took some money from a woman named Karen yesterday. $350? Where are you? Are you in the United States? Yes, sir. No, you're not. You're in, you're in India. I can track your IP address. You know that, right? All right. So just, just don't lie to me anymore, okay? Because, like, I know that this is a scam. Well, you have a good day, Lewis, if that is your real name. Yeah, that's it. All right, have a good one. No more scamming, okay? Or else I'm gonna give a I'm gonna give the police a call. Sure, no problem. All right, have a good Don't one. Good to talk to you. Bye bye. So eventually, I did what I could, and I submitted the PayPal account over to the PayPal authorities, hoping that they'll take action and flag the account. I don't know what came about with that, but I do know that things are a little bit more quiet over there these days. I'm always watching you scammers, so how about you just knock it off? Karma's coming for you eventually. And to everybody else, thanks for checking out this video. Every time we uncover one of these scams, these guys are forced to change their methods, and that's why we gotta keep talking about this stuff. If this was interesting, then I hope you share it with your friends, and do the right thing by subscribing. I can't wait to tell you more about these scams, so come on back and I will see you next time.